Hello dear learners, in this lecture we will discuss about dynamic programming that is another strategy to solve the algorithmic problems. Okay. So in this lecture we will introduce the concept of dynamic programming. So to understand this concept let us take the example of Fibonacci numbers. So, in Fibonacci numbers, we know that the Fibonacci of 0 is 0 and the Fibonacci of 1 is 1. And for any other number n, the Fibonacci of that number is Fibonacci of n minus 1 plus Fibonacci of n minus 2. For example, Fibonacci of 5 is Fibonacci of 4 plus Fibonacci of 3. So there is a recursive computation here. For finding the Fibonacci of 4, we recursively compute Fibonacci of 3 plus Fibonacci of 2. Okay. Similarly, Fibonacci of 3 is Fibonacci of 2 plus Fibonacci of 1 and Fibonacci of 2 is Fibonacci of 1 plus Fibonacci of 0. So we recursively compute the Fibonacci of n using such kind of a computation, right? So let me erase this ink. This is the recursive function which is calculating the Fibonacci of a given number n. And in this case, we have this base case and if n is 0 or n is 1, we will simply return this value. The Fibonacci of 0 will be 0 and Fibonacci of 1 will be 1. So n will be the answer in this case. So the value of Fibonacci will be n if n is 0 or n is 1, right? Otherwise, if n is not 0, not 1, it is any other number, then the Fibonacci value is Fibonacci of n minus 1 plus Fibonacci of n minus 2. So this is a recursive computation. It keeps on calling itself, the recursive function keeps on calling itself till it reaches the base case that is n is 0 or n is 1. Okay. And at the end, it will give us the answer that is the Fibonacci value of the input n. Right. So, if we try to create the recursive tree, recursion tree, then what will be what it will look like. Fibonacci of 5 is Fibonacci of 4 plus Fibonacci of 3. So in order to compute the Fibonacci value of 5, we have to call recursively Fibonacci with value 4 and Fibonacci with value 3. Okay. So when the execution reaches this recursive call, it again calls itself recursively with Fibonacci 3 and Fibonacci 2. Okay. And when the computation reaches here, then it also recursively calls itself with n equal to 2 and n equal to 1. Right. And when we reach here, then again it calls itself recursively with n equal to 1 and n equal to 0. Okay. And when we reach here, this is the base case. Right. So it will return the value 1. Value 1 will be returned by Fibonacci 1. And here also, this is the base case. So 0 will be returned here. So it means Fibonacci of 2 is 1 plus 0, 1. So this value will be returned by Fibonacci of 2 to its calling function. So 1 will be returned and when we reach here, this is also the base case. 
So Fibonacci of 1 is 1. So this value will be returned to the calling function. So Fibonacci of 3 will be equal to 1 plus 1, 2. This value will be returned here and it means it is 2. Plus for calculating the Fibonacci value of 4, we need Fibonacci of 3 which we have got but we also need Fibonacci of 2. So the com uh, computation goes here. So Fibonacci of 2 again it recursively calls itself Fibonacci of 2 is Fibonacci of 1 plus Fibonacci of 0. So these are the base cases. So it will return a 1. It will return a 0. 1 plus 0, 1. So the value 1 will be returned here. So Fibonacci of 4 is 3. Okay. So 3 will be returned here and we also need Fibonacci of 3. Okay. So again Fibonacci of 3 recursively calls Fibonacci of 2 and Fibonacci of 1. Fibonacci of 2 recursively calls Fibonacci of 1 and Fibonacci of 0. Okay. This returns a 1, this returns a 0. So these values will be added. So total is 1. This will be returned here and this will also return a 1. So 1 plus 1 total is 2. 2 will be returned. 3 plus 2 Fibonacci of 2 is 5. So you can see this recursion tree and from this recursion tree we can analyze one thing and that is that we recursive uh, we recompute certain values right if we look here fibonacci of 3 we are computing it here we are computing it here also similarly fibonacci of 2 it is being called several number of times fibonacci of 2 fibonacci of 1 is also being called multiple times Fibonacci of 1 Fibonacci of 1 right Fibonacci of 0 this is Fibonacci of 1 Fibonacci of 0 right so we are doing a wasteful recomputation of the same thing again and again in this recursion right so in this structure the recursion tree which we saw there were overlapping sub problems what is an what is a sub problem a sub problem is a smaller version of the original problem and the solution to the original problem can be derived by combining the solutions to the sub problems like in the previous example fibonacci of 5 can be divided into sub problems fibonacci of 4 and fibonacci of 3 and the solution to Fibonacci of 5 is the combination of Fibonacci of 4 solution and Fibonacci 3 solution, right? So these are the sub problems, right? Fibonacci n minus 1 and Fibonacci n minus 2, these are the sub problems of Fibonacci n. And what are overlapping sub problems? Any problem has overlapping sub problems if Finding its solution involves solving the same subproblem multiple times as we saw in the previous recursion tree. In the previous recursion tree, we call Fibonacci of 3, Fibonacci of 2, Fibonacci of 1, Fibonacci of 0 multiple times. So we were doing the same computation again and again. So this is resulting in wasteful recomputation. And also the computation tree, the recursion tree, it grows exponentially. Now, how to avoid these wasteful recomputations? What, what is the solution for uh, avoiding these wasteful recomputations? The solution is to use memoization or dynamic programming. So we will talk about these two solutions in this lecture. So first of all, 
before discussing memoization and dp in detail let us first talk about optimal substructure property the solution to the original problem can be derived by combining the solution to the sub problems as we saw earlier so that is called the optimal substructure property in the previous example of the fibonacci numbers the solution exhibits the optimal substructure property okay so for fibonacci numbers the optimal substructure is like this fibonacci of n is fibonacci of n minus 1 and fibonacci of n minus 2 okay so now let us talk about memoization we were talking about optimal substructure property because the memoization and dynamic programming concepts can be applied to a problem if the problem exhibits the optimal substructure property right that is the solutions to the sub problem can be combined to form the solution to the original problem right so the idea behind memoization is never recompute a sub problem how is it possible that we never recompute the sub problem the solution is to store the results of the sub problems which have been solved already in a table called memory table right so if we have already solved the solution of fibonacci 3 then we will store it in a table the answer will be stored in a table we will not recompute it okay memoization means remind yourself that this problem has already been solved by storing the result of each newly computed sub problem in a table as and when we compute or solve a sub problem we store its result we remember its result right and before solving a new problem before starting a new recursive computation first we will check whether we have already solved this problem or not by looking up in the table and in case of memoization the computation tree does not grow exponentially it grows linearly so now let us look at the same problem the uh, calculation of fibonacci of 5 but this time we will use memoization okay so this is what this is our memory table okay so in this memory table we already store the base case that is when k is 0 the value for which you have to find the fibonacci value uh, fibonacci value that is k okay so it is if it is 0 then the answer is 0 fibonacci value of 0 is 0 similarly fibonacci value of 1 is 1 so we have already stored these two values now we want to compute fibonacci of 5 so fibonacci of 5 is fibonacci of 4 plus fibonacci of 3 right and when we go to fibonacci of 4 it is fibonacci of 3 plus fibonacci of 2 okay uh so it means uh fib when we uh want to find the value of fibonacci of 5 okay so we look into this table this table initially contains only these two values fibonacci value of 0 and fibonacci of value of 1 okay it does not has fibonacci value of 5 okay so it looks into the table it does not find its answer so it recursively it starts a recursive computation and what is the recursive computation calling fibonacci 5 and fibonacci 3 and when we reach here again it looks into the table and it does not find the answer of fibonacci 4 so it again starts the recursive computation that is fibonacci of 4 calls fibonacci of 3 and fibonacci of 2 and when we reach here fibonacci of 3 it again looks into the table and it does not find its solution so it recursively calls 
Fibonacci of 2 and Fibonacci of 1. Right? So, when we reach here, then Fibonacci of 2, it is also not there in the table. Okay? So, it recursively calls Fibonacci of 1 and Fibonacci of 0. Okay? So, from there we reach here. When it reaches here, it finds that Fibonacci of 1 is 1 by looking up into the table. Okay? So, it returns value 1 here. Right? And after that, the execution goes here. Fibonacci of 0. It also finds answer by looking up into the table. Fibonacci of 0 is 0. So, it returns this value. And we add these two values here. And the answer we get is 1. Okay. Now, before returning this value, it saves this value into the table for future. Because we have computed, we have solved this problem of Fibonacci value of 2. So, in, uh, in order to avoid its recomputation in future, we will store its answer in the table. Okay. And then it returns. So, when we reach here, we have got the value of Fibonacci of 2. So, we will uh, now we now want the value of Fibonacci of 1. Okay, so uh, instead of starting this recursive computation, it looks up into the table and from the table it finds that uh, we have the value of Fibonacci of 1 that is 1. So it gets the answer 2. Okay, and before returning this value, it saves this value into the table. Okay, and then we return to Fibonacci of 3 and the value it is returning is 2. Okay, plus we need the value of Fibonacci of 2. Okay, so instead of uh, first starting the recursive computation, it first looks into the table and from the table it finds the answer to Fibonacci of 2. So, it does not start a recursive computation. Instead, it just picks the value from the table and computes the solution. Fibonacci of 4 is 3. Okay. And before returning, uh, I think uh, Fibonacci of 2 is 1. So, here we are getting answer equal to 4. There might be some mistake here. Right? Fibonacci of 3 is 2 and Fibonacci of 4 is, I think there should be 3 only. Okay. So, uh, it uh, instead of starting a recursive computation, it just gets the value of Fibonacci of 2 by looking up into the table. Okay. So, it gets the value 3 and before returning, it saves this value into the table and then it returns to Fibonacci 5 and Fibonacci 5 is equal to Fibonacci of 4 plus Fibonacci of 3 and again it looks up into the table for finding the value of Fibonacci of 3 which is 2. So, it does not start a recomputation here and just looks up into the table and gets the value of Fibonacci of 3 and the answer of Fibonacci of 5 is 5 and it saves this value into the table before returning. And now you can see that the recursion tree or the computation tree rather is growing linearly, not exponentially. Okay. So, this is the power of memoization. Right. So, now this is the improved Fibonacci that is the memoized Fibonacci. So, here uh, we pass the value for which we want to compute the Fibonacci and then before starting a recursive computation, it checks in the table. If the value n is in the table, then simply it returns that value. Okay. And if n is equal to 0 or 1, then it simply returns that value. 
otherwise it starts a recursive computation otherwise the value will be equal to fibonacci n minus 1 plus fibonacci n minus 2 and it recursively finds the answer and answer is stored in the table for location n before returning the answer okay so this is how memoized fibonacci works right and in general if you have any problem which has optimal substructure property then you can uh, use this kind of a structure for a memoized version of that problem okay so here it is showing that uh, we are computing a function f uh, and input parameters are x y and z and if they exist in the table then we will simply return their answer from the table otherwise we will recursively compute the value in terms of sub problems and after getting that value we will store that answer into the table and then we will return the answer okay now let us talk about dynamic programming in dynamic programming we anticipate we do not explicitly create a table memory table just like memoization instead we anticipate what the memory looks like okay so sub problems are known from the problem structure uh, as we did in the fibonacci problem we uh, knew that what the what is the structure of the problem by looking at the sub problems okay so if you want to use dynamic programming for solving some problem then the dependencies in that problem the dependencies of sub problems must form a DAG that is a directed acyclic graph it means that uh, it should not be that if you solve sub problem 1 then you can solve sub problem 2 and then sub problem 3 okay so this is directed acyclic graph there are no cycles okay it should not be that solution to sub problem 3 depends on sub problem 1 so this is a cycle if this is the structure of your problem then you cannot use dynamic programming you can use dynamic programming only when the dependencies among the sub problems they form a deck right and in the fibonacci problem the dependencies of the sub problems they form a deck right so we solve the problems in the topological order that is we solve the base case first uh, and then we solve the problem that depends on that uh, base case and so on okay so we go higher and higher starting from the base it means we go in a bottom up order okay so uh, in order to get an idea let us look at this dp fibonacci okay so as i said that we start from the bottom to the top it means we solve the smallest sub problem first and at the last we solve the original complete problem okay so here it is fibonacci of n n means any number so let us say n is 5 okay so first of all we solve the base case okay so what is the base case base case is fibonacci of 0 and fibonacci of 1 okay so fibonacci of 0 is 0 and fibonacci of 1 is 1 okay and then if we know the fibonacci of 0 and 1 we can solve the fibonacci of 2 okay so fibonacci of 0 and fibonacci of 1 can be used to find the solution to fibonacci of 2 okay and if we know the solution to fibonacci of 2 then fibonacci of 3 can be solved okay so fibonacci of 3 is 
equal to Fibonacci of 2 plus Fibonacci of 1, right? So, like this, okay? Similarly, Fibonacci of 4 can be solved if we, we already know the answer to Fibonacci of 3 because Fibonacci of 4 is equal to Fibonacci of 3 plus Fibonacci of 2, okay? And similarly, Fibonacci of 5 depends on Fibonacci of 4 and Fibonacci of 3, okay? So now you can see that this is the problem structure and here we can clearly see the dependencies among the sub-problems. So Fibonacci 0 and Fibonacci 1, these are the base problems, the smallest sub-problems, okay? And Fibonacci of 2, it depends on Fibonacci of 0 and 1. Fibonacci of 3 depends on Fibonacci of 2 and 1. 4 depends on 3 and 2. 5 depends on 4 and 3. And here, this is a DAG. The dependencies are forming a directed acyclic graph. Okay. So, it means there are no cycles. Right. And it is directed. Every edge has a direction. And we solve these problems in this topological order as shown here. Topological order means we start from the bottom till the top. Right. So, we know Fibonacci of 0 is 0. Fibonacci of 1 is 1 and now we are going from 2 to n. So let us say n is 5 in this particular example. So when i is 2 then what we will do? Fib table i that is 2 is equal to fib table i minus 1 plus fib table i minus 2. So Simply, we will use these base cases, okay? So, 0 plus 1 is equal to 2, right? So, this is how we got the answer and we put it in fib table at location 2, okay? Now, i becomes 3 in the next iteration. So, fib table at 3 will be equal to fib table 2 plus fib table 1, okay? So, it will be uh, 1 plus 2 equal to 3. Similarly, when i is 4, then fib table 4 will be equal to fib table 3 plus fib table 2, right? So, it is 3 plus 2 equal to 5. Uh, I think there, there is some mistake in my this calculation, but idea is clear, right? So, finally, we will reach 5. So, it will be equal to fifth table at location 4 plus fifth table at location 3. So, which will give us the required answer and this loop will stop here and we will return fifth table entry at location n, okay? So, you can see here, uh, this uh, computation is linear, okay? Here we have only one for loop and for loop is running from 2 to n, right? So the complexity in this case is order of n, right? So uh, now we are ready to summarize this uh, topic, uh, memoization and dynamic programming. In memoization, we store the values of subproblems in a table and we look up this table before making a recursive computation, right? While in dynamic programming, we solve the subproblems in the topological order of their dependencies. And the condition here is that the dependencies must form a directed acyclic graph as we seen in the example of Fibonacci numbers, right? And the computation is iterative. Iterative means we can use a for loop, right? 